I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm starting off with some excuses. Now, I haven't posted anything on YouTube for a couple of months or maybe longer. I'm not sure, but I was having a little trouble with my channel and I have got that resolved finally. So, hopefully this time I'll be on the right track to resume video stuff on the tube. Anyway, what I wanted to start off with is a new thing I want to do once in a while. It's called road test. I'm going to road test vehicles that run or kind of move down the road on their own. And the first one is going to be the Wreck Runner. I get a lot of uh, comments on this car. I've even got an Instagram post of, that did over a million views. So it's very popular, even though to look at it, it's not much to look at. It's pretty rough. It's kind of a little surface rusted on the roof, but it's actually an excellent vehicle. I'm going to take you around this car from top to bottom before we take it out on the road and go for an actual drive. Now, this car has some history. It was a roadkill project originally that was a completely totaled 1968 Roadrunner. And by totaled, I mean it hit a pole and it was wasted. Freiburger and I got a 1968 satellite body and we just basically took all of the mechanicals, the front end and the trunk lid off of the wreck car and the shell was filled up and put together like you see it here basically in about four days so we're pretty proud that we got the car running that quickly and at the time this car was owned by the production company i ended up buying it i really liked it a lot so i i spent a year trying to get my hands on it and finally it's mine and since i've had it i've made a few mods and uh, i'll take you around and talk about those first now the rear end had some 355 gears i put four tens in it for better drag strip acceleration. I also added Lakewood traction bars. Those are the yellow things that are underneath. They were called slapper bars. And basically as the axle reacts, those things hit the leaf springs and it causes the suspension to rise in the back and takes load off the front end for more traction at the back. Um, a lot of guys will tell you traction bars don't work on a Mopar. They work. So there it is. As a matter of fact, these uh, traction bars, I pulled off a Super B over 20 years ago and kept them. I've run them on a couple of different cars and I've always had good luck with them. So that part's done and the drive shaft fell out of this car at one point. So I had a new shaft built with uh, 1350 joints. So it's really bulletproof. Those are heavy duty and I'm not going to have a drive shaft drop out of it again. Well, I hope not. And what else? I think that's about it. The, the wheels and tires we had on it before, we've got 245 60s in the front and 275 60s in the back. I also have some drag slicks for the back, but right now we're just running on street tires. The rest of the mechanicals here are a 383 engine. It's not detailed at all. It's basically just the way it came out of the wrecked car and probably a little bit worse since we've never even cleaned it but it runs really good what we did do however is we added the tti headers we put edelbrock aluminum heads on it it already had a performer rpm intake manifold so we kept that and other than that the engine or power plant is exactly as this car was when it was a wrecked 68 Roadrunner. Behind it is an 833 Chrysler four-speed manual transmission. Uh, we had some problems with the clutch burning out on it really quickly and I decided I'm just going to swear off street style clutches and now I exclusively use like six puck race style clutches and they don't need any break-in really. You can just hammer on them right away, which we tend to do, especially when we're using this for an episode of a show. We'll put it together, do some modification, and then we're straight out just burning rubber and tearing things apart. These puck style clutches are, are really good. I find them very drivable on the street and extremely durable. This one's from a company called Spec, and I highly recommend them. They had tremendous service. They shipped that thing out to me, and we put it in, problem solved for good i think it's a manual steering car so it's a little hard to handle the manual steering on these cars is very very slow 
but it's lighter than a power steering thing and less complexity because you don't need a pump and a bunch of hoses and all that stuff. So I like that. Let's take a look inside. Outside door handle doesn't work. There is glass in these doors, but these are power windows. I've got a buddy of mine, Birdsong, Chris Birdsong. You might check out his channel. He wants the power window regulator, so I'm going to give him that and replace them with something else. Pro Car by Scat Seats, which I really like. These are low back buckets, like the original. I mean, they're not a restoration seat. They're a different design than the original low backs, but the theme of it's the same. So I really like that. You can see the uh, long handle for the shifter. Now this 833 four speed is not the slickest shifting unit. I've got a company uh, called Passen Performance building me a race set of face plated gears to replace all the guts of that transmission, but they're not done yet. So I hope I have that before I take this to the drag strip next time, but it's anyone's guess with supply the issues being what they are right now. Um, I think that pretty much covers most of the car. We've got the engine, we talked about the trans, drive shaft, rear end, wheels and tires, interior. That makes up a whole car as far as I'm concerned. Now, there's only one thing left to do. Hop in and drive it. I'm gonna do that right now and I'll take you guys along for a ride. Hope you like it as much as I do. Okay, this is going to be a cold start, even though it's not cold, but I mean, it hasn't been started for a few days. So hopefully it fires right up. I'll put a couple of pumps of the accelerator pump, ignition, and... While I'm here, let's just have a look at the controls on the car. Now, it's missing the whole factory dash layout and uh, instruments and stuff like that. I've got all that stuff out of the uh, donor car, but never put it in. Maybe it'll go in someday, but for now, I've got this. And I'll explain to you everything we have here. We have a tachometer here. It's kind of a little small unit. It only goes to 6,000 RPM, which is not enough. I can assure you of that. But fortunately, the needle will go past six, so I can see right about there will be seven, 7,500, right? you know, as far as you want to go. I've got the typical three pack of gauges here, oil pressure, voltage, and water temperature. Here is the electric fan switch. And this is the ignition, this button start, and this is headlights on and off. So it's all very simple. It works fairly reliably. I don't think there's any fuses. It's probably not the safest setup electrically, but it works. So here we go. Contact and fire up. All right, I'm just gonna drive this thing off gingerly and kind of uh, give you my driving impressions. That's, that's the idea here. So. Here we go. Uh, the first time I took off, it might have been a little aggressive, but I, I, I honestly think the throttle got stuck is what happened. It just, I just revved it up and it, it must have got stuck because I, I didn't intend to do that. Anyway, first gear. You notice it's very loud in here, so I'm gonna be kind of shouting. Uh, that's because the exhaust system consists of these uh, cherry bomb bullet mufflers. They're very, very small. They hardly muffle at all. So, and they end, basically, the exhaust system stops right under the cab, which resonates. So, if you're designing an exhaust system to be quiet and allow conversation in the car, don't do it like this. It doesn't work. But anyway, 
but this thing is just so much fun to drive. I just love it. I love the manual transmission, the clutch, the whole look from the driver's seat, the instrument array, the whole thing. I mean, it just, it brings a smile to my face right away. So, anyhow, here we have some actual pavement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here now. Oh, I can see some kind of black lines on this road. I'm not sure what those are from. There's two of them. Um, maybe someone was burning rubber here. I'm not too sure about that. I'm not sure if this thing will burn rubber because it has a, a whole bunch of stuff in the trunk weighing it down. So breaking the tires loose may be kind of hard. I haven't done loads in the trunk yet. I'll just roll that easy.
to start honking their horns. So when you do the Brody, get a Brody out. Just hit the throttle and away you go. That's what you do.